Saint Peter Damien is a person who draws our attention and excites us despite the abandonment and cruelty of those closest to him. He dedicated himself to prayer and fasting from his youth, and already at the start of his pastoral life, Peter showed a profound solidarity with suffering and human needs. He is a man of solidarity with the suffering of others, with the needs of others. For example, for us, it is very difficult to forgive those bad times that others cause us to live. Or we live remembering that time of infancy during which we were missing something or of that situation in which we were raised. We never forgive our own life story. He is the man who reconciles us with the pains of our own life, with the hidden wounds inside us. Because in this reconciliation, we learn to understand the wounds of others and we place ourselves at the service of others. He was a great promoter of the spirit of reform that the Church was beginning in those days. His speech and his virtue brought light to that turbulent 11th century. To reform is to change, to change in order to make better, to change to make a commitment with life and with history. From his life as a hermit, he learned to do away with all that was unnecessary, to live austerely, while today consumerism leads to have and have and have and search for more things. He is the man of austerity, of simplicity. Where do we go with so many backpacks of things? At times the desire for things is a backpack that weighs us down and does not let us walk. He learned how to fulfill the task of each day and exercise patience to accept the trials of God. And his mission was directed to restoring the spiritual life of each person, as if every person was unique for him. Service to others. He knew how to treat sinners with goodness and indulgence instead of condemning them from the start, just like Jesus who ate with publicans and sinners. And when the Pharisees accused him to his face, he said, the sick have needs of a doctor, not the healthy, and they came close to him. The hardness and crude realism of their words contrasted with those of tenderness that he expressed when he found himself with a sinful person. He writes, Poor sinful soul, I cry for you. It is not a temple made by human hands that had collapsed, but a soul, a noble soul, made in the image and likeness of God and rescued by the blood of Christ. He saw each person that soul gained by the blood of Christ, and he was moved. He came closer. The needs of that person moved him and obliged him to help. May he serve as a model for these times.